cross country uh, is set to go to nationals this week. They've really lived up to the potential, the hype. And welcome back to the official Emmaus Athletic Podcast in the nest. I'm your co-host, Shane, and I'm here with Matthew Tomlinson. I guess I'm just Shane. Shane Douglas here with Matthew Tomlinson, uh, always and forever. Um, it's great that people can uh, fill in for me. You know, when I'm on the road, it just seems like you're never on the road, man. <laughs> you're never traveling. Yep. You don't Especially do your job. 1 a.m. this morning. You don't Getting do back your home. job. You don't do your job. Uh-huh. It's good to be back. Uh, enjoyed uh, and very thankful for Landon being able to step in uh, mm-hmm. last week. So he did a great job. Thank you, Landon. Shout out, Landon. the first student co-host. Yeah. I think he was, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that was great. We've been wanting to get more mm-hmm. students on here, especially our student athletes. And uh, thank you for uh, opening that door, Landon. So shout out to you. We love that. Uh, but good to be back. Been traveling a lot for work, going to a lot of conferences. Was just out in Kentucky at the Ark, which the Ark is awesome. It is. And I, the Creation Museum, too. Yeah, I, so we didn't get to the Creation Museum, but I went to the Ark and Creation Museum a couple years ago, 2019. And... I didn't appreciate that is a couple five. <laughs> I don't know. Felt like yesterday, but it. I didn't. I feel like I, I didn't appreciate it as much because this time around, I was you I, gobbled up everything. I gobbled mm-hmm. it up. Mm-hmm. I love the arc. It was great. Uh, I want to go back. Honestly, I would love to go back and like walk through the arc again and go to the zoo. And as it's well like as it's a, not a like a half day thing. Like it is a full day experience. Yeah. Like you go to the arc. Arc's full day, one day, and then a museum is. I mean, museum is like one and a half days, honestly, because there's so much. There's there. so much there, and I, I I I really zoomed through it the mm. the first time. So. Um, yeah. You're working on your 40 time. Yeah, that's what that's mm-hmm. stupid. I was cross country. Your PR record. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which cross country uh is set to go to nationals this week. They are. They probably they're leaving right around now when we're recording yep. for their race on Friday, Shane. I'm excited for them. Let's go. I'm excited for them. They're uh they have really lived up to the potential, the hype, and I uh, just can't wait for uh to see what they're able to do this weekend uh on the road, like most of the people. They're going to Michigan, correct? Uh Indiana. Indiana. So a little further. A little further. No ish. No, Underneath it. Michigan is no Indiana's closer than Michigan. Underneath it. Yeah. Something like that. It's closer though. Anyway, yeah. Man, we need to go back I, to school. <laughs> I guess we gotta go to we gotta go sit in Mrs. McDowell's history class. I don't want to geography class. Uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, they have a tremendous opportunity. I was thinking yesterday, I'm like, the 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 saying that they need to trademark is you know how the the rock says, Can you smell what the rock is cooking? Can you smell what the Girardis are cooking? No. Because they have put Pasta. together such a good pasta. team pasta pregame here we go but yeah what a what an amazing opportunity they have to compete at nationals the um this year has been an amazing year it especially has. for the, the men and the women have done very well as well but it's exciting because well as well we'll see what happens yeah Some and good things will happen we'll we'll talk more about that as the show continues but yes. uh, really uh this episode we're transitioning it's a transition episode from fall sports Two, two winter, winter sports. sports. So last week, uh, Landon and Matt were able to talk about the upcoming games as well as tournament play for the Eagles for men's and women's basketball, winter sports, and the wrap up of our fall sports with uh, soccer and volleyball. So uh, now we're really making that transition. Our fall, two of our two of the three fall sports, men's soccer and women's volleyball, have uh, come to a close. They are done. And then officially, <laughs> and then we, like we said, we got cross country still, still pushing it. And then yep. we have men's basketball, men's or men's basketball, women's basketball on right, the roll. On the they're they're mm-hmm. going on it. So, uh, they're they're in a full swing of things. They are. They are. How's it been, Coach? It's been good. It's been yeah. fun. I mean, basketball's finally here. Like we started later than normal, mm-hmm. and so the anticipation was was getting a little itchy because we wanted games to happen, but. I'm excited. It's finally here, and both teams have some very promising things yeah. that they're looking and we'll, at. So. And we will get into that. We will. So we'll put a pause in that, put a pen there. Pause. Uh, but we got to talk about uh, wrapping up this season for men's soccer and women's volleyball, yes. which ultimately, Matt, it's uh, the best way to put it is it was a great season, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, but in the end, uh, disappointing. Disappointing. Disappointing finish. finish. We'll go with some good news first. We'll talk about 
Let's say the, the good conference. mood for last. No, we'll go with the conference. Uh, I want to go first. last with that because that's important to fine to talk about how they I, I started like, uh-uh. and then how they finished. So, so you, so you would eat a churro first in your in your meal. You eat dessert first if it's dairy free. Yeah, over your main course. Do whenever the churro bars are out there for tacos, I eat that first. You eat the churro 100%. first, and then you go in for the taco. All right, Shane. So the Midwest Region Awards. Looking at the soccer year, we have actually and volleyball. We have two. Awesome awards. Both Coach McHugh mm. and Coach Richter got Coaches of something. the Year in the region. There we go. There it goes. Congratulations. So shout out Coach McHugh and Coach Hannah on Coaches of the Year. Back to back for Coach Hannah. So that's super exciting. Dog. Looking at soccer, Tucker, Capus, Josh, Matt, and Jake Matt received first team all conference awards. Congratulations. Kreiner was honorable mention. And then the new award. Jake Matt, newcomer of the year. Super exciting. And then for the women's volleyball, along with coach of the year for coach Hannah, uh, first team awarded were Caitlin Rand, Sayla Gregory, and Michelle Striley. And then second team was Jenica Beach. And Jenica, for the second year in a row, was Libero of the year. So shout out Thanks to our Eagles. Me. Who performed me. well this year and you know received awards that was yeah. recognized by other coaches in the region. Yeah. So I mean, a lot of that just shows how promising our teams yes, are and man. how how great of student athletes we do have. And uh, when coming come at the end of the year, we usually have a ton on the list of uh, the uh, student athlete academic. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the term for that? Academic All American. Academic All American. Those will we, come out later. Yep, yeah, we usually have mm-hmm. a, a full list of uh, of our athletes on mm-hmm. on that list, which is always an uh, an awesome time because it really proves that our students are um, our athletes are more than athletes. Yep. They're students, and they're involved. They're involved on campus and activities, and uh, but also in the classroom. Yes. So, uh, looking forward to that, and like uh, I, said, I hope yeah. I don't have to eat my words. I hope you guys are actually studying. You know. Hopefully. Oh my goodness. But like you said, of those eight students that received awards, only one senior. Mm. So very promising yeah. young group of great athletes, That's great true. student athletes. It's true. And we, we talk about how it is disappointing. And of course, uh, we only feel as fans, as people who are involved in the athletic realm here at Emmaus and uh, same to you watching, either if you're a family member or if you're just uh, alum or uh, just friends of the school, or a fan. We only feel a little bit. We only feel a little bit of disappointment. So uh, being an athlete on the team, it's it's so much worse. It's it so is. much more uh, emotions and effort, time, energy that have been put into this that you could have been putting into relationships, being put in into uh, a Hobbies, lot of other things. Academics, yeah. else. So we first off, we thank you. We thank you. And it's the time of Thanksgiving. It is. We are very thankful for all so of our student athletes uh, on our men's soccer team, our women's volleyball team specifically as uh, as their te- or their season has come to an end. But we are very thankful for the time, the energy you've put yes. into it, mm. uh, how well you have represented the name Emmaus on the field, on the court, but most importantly, our Lord Jesus. So thank you guys yes. so much for the season you've given us, all the laughs, all the excitement on this podcast, on the show, uh, like in the hallways, uh, on the field, on the court, in the gym. So Everywhere. fun. It's been so <laughs> fun this season. And I, I'm so uh, thankful for you guys uh bringing back a lot of the energy here at Emmaus yes uh, from just 100 percent a lot of dead years from uh COVID uh but things are coming back it's an exciting time to be ego we talk about it all the time uh so much stuff is Mm -hmm. happening and it's a lot of it is because of you guys it is so the listeners but as well as you athletes that we have here so thank you so much for everything you have put in uh to Emmaus to the sport to each other Mm -hmm. um and then also the coaches the time what they've done. We know how the you recruit hours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're thankful. We're thankful for all of you. And we know that with this young team, Matt, it's going to be, it's a promising future. It is promising these, future. These next two to three years that we, and if we can keep building off of that five to 10 years, mm-hmm. a lot of great, great things can happen yeah. and will it, happen. And inexperience comes in experience. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and our inexperience has really shown in a postseason this year yep. in conference, as well as in regionals. And with that, I hope it gives more hunger to our student athletes on a women's volleyball team and a men's soccer team. And next year, we can really bring it. Because they got a little bit of taste this year. Just a little bit. And hopefully it whets the appetite to continue going on because it's it'll be there in the future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but thank you guys so much. And 
Uh, look forward to next year. So if you're an athlete, if you're someone who wants to be recruited, fill out that recruiting app. If you're a men's soccer player, women's volleyball, volleyball player. Follow well, us on social media, yeah. hit up the recruiting forums, hey. and we'll see what happens. You know, here's the thing. Well, I, as someone who uh, deals with recruits and everything, you come play, one, for a coach that is recognized as uh, one of the best coaches in their expertise, mm-hmm. their area of expertise. Come join a program that isn't just something to help create. Like, creating a program is something special. Anyone can join a Bob Jones or Pensacola that brings in awards every year. Mm -hmm. But to come to Emmaus, where we don't go to nationals a lot, and to create a legacy, come create something here, right? But then you also have these programs that have proven themselves this year to be successful. So you're not just also creating, but you're also joining that creation process yes. that we have our coaches and our athletes have already uh, put together, put pieces in place because we have made it far. We have awards. We have shown it right here. We've shown it on the stats. We've shown it in our record. The that steps that the, the, the we're program to watch out for. athletics has taken these last five years has been humongous. Yeah, it really has. So you can join a team that is a calendar or circled on the calendar consistently with uh, other t- uh, from uh, our opponents or hope to try out for one of those teams cause, this because because they're so um, full. Yeah, yeah volleyball is yeah. pretty full and uh, soccer. I mean, you need a lot of you need a lot of bodies out there. So, but come join, come join, play for uh, play for a great coach, play for a great uh, institution institution here at Emmaus University. The Lord. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Are you okay? But yeah. Looking at soccer, Shane. <laughs> no, Shane. We're talking about depressing things because of how we finished. Looking at soccer. <laughs> soccer oh was in the semifinals, Whoa. and they had a rematch against the home host school, Grace University, who was actually ranked third in the nation at the time. Yeah. And uh, we lost to him previously. I think earlier in the season was it three one or was it four one? Um, but yeah, looking for a, a big rematch, but right off the gate, <laughs> Seth got hurt out for mm-hmm. the game. Yeah. We got a, a penalty. They called a penalty on us in the box and they scored off of that. And so we lost two zero, um, super sad, but grace went on to win regionals yeah. and go to nationals. And so, um, we had a shot. I mean, Tucker kept us in the game the whole game. I think he probably saved, like six guaranteed goals. Yeah. So the score would have been a lot different than it actually was, but, um, regional goalie of the year. Yeah. So. Re- yeah. And so, um, first team, first team. Yeah, baby. Um, so yeah, it's just, I mean, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, they had a fantastic year, but mm-hmm. now we know like where we have to be to get to that level, to get to the ne- to regional championship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, a lot of injuries throughout the entire season, not just in, mm-hmm. uh, at the end, but I mean, because we had More to shift our whole lineup the during end. the game yeah. because we had to pull Josh back, and then that mm-hmm. took the ball out of the midfield, so we yeah. had to play a defender. More specifically, towards the end, soccer team was really uh, banged up, even though they we were. had a lot more depth this year than comparable to previous years. Some key guys were yeah. Uh, but hopefully we can retain majority of the, the lineup and uh, add some more recruits. Maybe if you know someone, uh, point them our way. But uh, it was a great season. It was, it was a really good season for uh, the soccer team, our, our men's team, and – um, it is. It's disappointing. It's sad, but uh, there's also a lot of things to be proud of. Yes, having double digits win, double digit, double digit wins in a season. Runner up in the conference, both regular yep. season and postseason. Yep, and then making it uh, being number two seed in regional play, and uh, so much more to say. Uh, all the awards from our um, athletes that Matt mentioned earlier also speak for themselves. Both top ten power ratings too, which is yep. pretty impressive. This is true. Uh, top, what number five in the nation? In the number five in the nation at one point. At one point, mm-hmm. and as well as eight, I believe. Yep. So, uh, a great season for the men's soccer team. We thank you guys. Uh, thank you, Will. Will's clapping mm-hmm. back there. Uh, and hopefully, we got next year. Yep. You know, you, I I said it. I told the guys multiple times. Just you have this year. You don't got next, right? And it's sad to see Josh and Carlos and many others uh, possibly. Uh, Leaving the field uh, for Emmaus Eagles, uh, for them they're graduating. For uh, for others, it's it's different. And uh, we got next year. We got right? next year. Yeah, next All year we'll hard see what work in the off season, we'll putting that work in because we know what where we have to get to to mm-hmm. get to that level. And then on the volleyball side of things, yep, volleyball side they uh, came out as a one seed. They played in the against the playing game winner, which is Moody. Moody beat Maranatha, so we played Moody. Yep, uh, swept them three zero. 
and then waited for the winner of Grace and Great Lakes. Grace ended up winning that game, and so we had beaten Grace 3-0 earlier in the year um, at Grace. This game was at Maranatha um, for the region, and man, we won the first set pretty handily, won the second set very handily, got to the third set, and we're one point away from winning the regional championship and just let it kind of slip away. Well, they were already in extra they, s- sets too. And the, so we let it slip away in extra. that third set. Grace ended up coming and they got two straight points to win the third set, won the fourth set. Yeah. And then won the fifth set yeah. to win the regional championship. And so, yeah, but I mean, on a bright side, Caitlin ran, broke the school record for most set, most kills in a, in a set or in a game. Mm-hmm. So that's a bright side, but man, it was just, oh, they were like, literally, they were one point they're away so from, from winning. The uh, crowd got up, they were loud. The game, yeah. Going to nationals. So, I mean, again, they were right there. They just tasted it. And then uh, they were in there for the, uh, potentially had an opportunity for the automatic bid because um, there are two automatic bids for regional or for nationals for volleyball. But um, due to the a couple other teams that were involved that also were under consideration for the automatic bid they did not get it this year yeah which just goes to show that you know you have to win to guarantee your spot there so we were saying earlier every game matters yep. every game matters if that's even conference to regionals to you know a, a team that might not be that good mm-hmm. every game matters it doesn't it doesn't matter uh you know their reputation or their or their record yep you never know what could happen and this this is a proof sports anything can happen this is a proof to it and it's really sad uh the the girls girls are so disappointed and we know the the coaches um have put in so much work and all Mm -hmm. the players so our hearts go out to them of course Um, but we know what they got and they know too and they're they're still still really young yep and i'm this is this just makes them more hungry it makes us more hungry for next year and mm-hmm. kind of scares me i know kinda scares me a little, a little worried bit. uh the bounce back that they're gonna have next year <laughs> oh my we'll see uh <laughs> it's gonna be exciting it's uh we the thing is we know volleyball i i, I trust volleyball to uh be back in the same position next mm-hmm. year better uh, and maybe even better and uh we'll finish it yes. finish it how they should have done it this year yep. and they know that they don't need to hear anything from us or nope. anyone else. So let's just keep quiet. Let them handle their business. You know, you guys got it. They got it. It's it's a business trip for them and uh, for three hundred and you know sixty something days. Something days, <laughs> all business, and they'll they'll handle it. They and will I, handle and it. I trust them completely. So do I. I, I trust uh, Coach Hannah, Coach Meg, uh, to get that done. I do. Yes. Truly, truly. So again, thank you guys so much for everything you have done. Yes, uh, it was a great for season. Full, what a year it was! Yeah, full of laughter, full of excitement. It was what eighteen great wins. wins this season? Oh yeah, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Moving on though. Yep, looking at the last cross country race before the nationals. Last fall sports. Yeah, so cross country. Nothing for Shane. them, Will. Nothing for them. The last fall sport. That's a lame one. Oh that yeah. Was a lame one. That's all um, right. So cross country had a race up at Luther College, which yep. is in Decor, Iowa. So about an Pretty hour town. and a half north of us, hour fifteen, depending on how fast you drive, looking at the scenery or slow. I thought um, it was, a lot it was an away. all D three race. So us and a bunch of Division three schools. Um, the women ran a six k. So obviously they run five k at nationals. We'll see what happens if that ends up being a six k in the future. But uh, during that six k, Bria and Riley. But PR yeah. their 6k time, which was awesome dogs. And then on the men's side within their 8k, they had three PRs. Matthew Hanselman PR'd, Caleb Ness PR'd, and Daniel PR'd. Dogs. Great. And that got their team time up to, I think, 232, which puts us again at second in the nation. Second, second. in team time. So that was a good response. Behind Anna who? didn't Anna didn't run this race because okay. she had clinicals. Yeah. But uh she'll be ready to go for nationals this week but yeah so it's good a good final bob jones is number one yeah bob jones is number one okay so it's a good final like pre-championship race mm-hmm. against d3 schools against we, d3 schools. we pretty much race the entire season d3 and ai yep. even occasionally sometimes a d2 school but that's yeah. very that's pretty rare but uh, a lot of nai and d3 so 
Uh, they look good. Yeah, they look they good. Do. Matthew Matthew's looking strong at the end of the season. Uh, hope hopefully having like a really full healthy roster going into nationals. Yes, I know Will Caranda might be racing. Uh, I think he is on the edge of it. I'm not sure if Alice Hanselman will be racing for the girls probably not. Out, Al- yeah, we'll probably not it, Alice so. quite yet. Uh, but next but yeah. season she's looking to make a, a bounce big back. Big opportunity for them. Oh yeah, big huge opportunity, opportunity and. Uh, we we knew the opportunity for a volleyball team and soccer team going into their regional play, and we know the opportunity for our cross country team. And everybody know everybody for our men's soccer team. We knew it was going to be tough. Mm-hmm. We knew Grace was good, but we knew uh, it was either going to be us or them. Yep. Uh, and it was them. Yep. For volleyball, we we really thought it was going to be us. Yep. You know? And the Lord humbled us, and that is amazing. Yep. Thank you, Lord. Yep. And it was Grace. Uh, Grace won both. And <laughs> hmm. they also had both uh, oh! MVPs of the region too. Don't don't talk more. <laughs> don't talk. Uh, <laughs> so cross country, your it turn. Is, it Let's is go. up to you. Okay, no pressure. R.I.P. Headphones. Uh, man, I love our cross country team. Hopefully, hopefully when Andy watched that, he you didn't just scare him off the couch or something. Yeah, he was taking a sip of his <laughs> yeah. drink. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hopefully it didn't happen. Oh, I hope it does. <laughs> I hope I want to hear a story. Uh, <laughs> Either way, we're looking forward. There, yeah, they're gonna be taking off in uh, around now, probably now, which yeah. is around four p.m. Central Time Wednesday, November. What's the date? Thirteenth. Thank you, Will. When November thirteenth? Mm-hmm. Gonna go to. I really like what they do for nationals for cross country. It's, mm-hmm. it's more than just a race. They don't obviously drive hours uh, on end to run a twenty to thirty minute race and then drive. All the way home. They go there. What do they do, Matt? Yeah, so it's really cool how the NCCA does it with all the national um, championship weeks is they go there. They have a worship. They usually have a message and a worship concert um, like the day, two days before. And then they have a service project somewhere. Yep. So all the teams go out and have some sort of service project. I think you it might be like two or three different things. So I think like one year they did like a, a canned food drive. And so that went to like a food bank and like serve there. Well, they do various different things and then they go out and then they compete on yeah. the Friday or Saturday. So, so it's really, it's honestly, it's a family community yeah. and it really, it really shows who we are. You get to yeah. connect with other te- yeah. players from or the runners mm-hmm. from other teams and especially it's really neat. smaller D two schools, mm-hmm. uh, being able to compete against one another. We know mm-hmm. that a lot of these schools have great communities, yeah. a great Christ, a great Christ centered, uh, atmosphere, uh, that they, they, they have good doctrine. So it's, it's good for us to have that uh, yes. that sweet fellowship, mm-hmm. that sweet fellowship with other schools. Because mm-hmm. well, I mean, we've talked about our experience in the past being on the men's soccer, men's basketball, uh, part of their teams, and fellowshipping, fellowshipping yeah. with the opposing team, and then That's going to the part. and then competing against them on the field or on the court right after. It's awesome. It's great, and uh, cross country uh, really embodies that. Mm-hmm. And as they really do, we really talk about them as a team, as a whole, always being together, going over to either the Handelman's house, Girardi's houses, or having a meal here on campus together, Bible studies as well. Team doing like night. even adventure, a lot of adventuring and hiking. Mm-hmm. So they are a family community. They really embody, um, and a great example, uh, of Emmaus itself as an institution, but also of course for Just Christ. A tight knit group of people. Too. Oh yeah. They're all like each other. Yeah. So I think I would, I would, I would assume all the other cross country teams are pretty Hopefully. similar, you know, <laughs> you would hope so. And like they get a fellowship with one another. So it's going to be sweet, yeah, sweet time be. for them, but we're hoping our men's team um, and women's team to finish strong. Uh, we know Let's our go runners, our men's team has a great shot of, uh, finishing on the podium this year. So mm. a top three finish for men's team final, uh, last year, o- Ozark had the, um, fastest individual fastest, time. Yep, individual runner for men's, and Bob Jones won team as time. team. Mm-hmm. So Bob Jones looking to. They brought back majority of their runners last year, so uh, they're good. They're really good, but they're also they mm-hmm. didn't really run against a lot of our guys. Nope. And a lot of the other newer teams. Uh, so, and we who a, really we knows group. what will happen? The favorite to win we'll is find out Bob Jones on Friday. Yeah, favorite <laughs> to win is Bob Jones for sure, uh, but. You never know. Our favorite to win know. for a lot of other sports, you know, our volleyball team mm-hmm. was favorite. And yeah. uh, t- technically, Kuiper was favorite to win in soccer, being the one seed. And they didn't win. Didn't win. They so lost in the semis. We'll see what the men's do. Matt, do you want to give them a quick uh, uh, kind of rundown of how the scoring will work? 
yes. individually as well as team. Yes. So this is what we talked about last week with the conference and like the regional race was it's not about your time. Nope. For individual time. Yeah. It's about where you finish. Mm -hmm. And so it's so like last year, the team that finished second actually had the fourth fastest time. And, mm -hmm. but they, but their runners finished in certain places that bumped them up. So the goal for this is to, which we talked about last episode is like, you know, our one to six runners or one to five, it's a four minute gap, which is, which is very minimal, which is yeah. like what Bob Jones gap is. So that gives us a big advantage because if we go like five, six, eight, 20, that, that will bump our times up and so our scores up. And so you want the lowest score. And so mm -hmm. it'll be placed on, you know, the team run. So like if there's a, if there's a school that's there that doesn't have a full team, let's say they had like three runners that qualified from my understanding is those individual times won't count for the team time schools. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's actually yes. great information to know. So essentially where, wherever a runner is placed, that's uh, the, that's point, they the get. point they get. So if you placed ninth, that's nine points towards your team. It's golf setting, uh, golf rules. So lower the points, the better. Yes. Bob Jones finished in the mid twenties last year at nationals, which was crazy. The second place team was in the mid eighties. Wild. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> who knows what's going to happen we'll find this out, year. Yeah. Right? Uh, women uh, for our women's team. Same thing goes. Yep. Same thing goes. Yeah. Right now they, ha and right now they're at the, I think so men have the second fastest time right now. Women have the fifth fastest time. Mm -hmm. So it we'll is. See. Yeah. It's a, um, and I believe harder, the top uh, 10 that finish are all Americans. Yeah. Pretty sure that's the top 10 individuals. It might be finish. even 12. Maybe it's 12. Because I think it was a weird number for I think Kate finished 12. Regionals. Yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah. So it's an uphill battle for our women's team for sure. Uh, they're, they play time wise, they were, uh, I think, ranked higher last year than this I year. Think so, yeah. Uh, but. That doesn't mean really much. We've added yeah. a lot of lot of great talent this year. It's just if people mean, are PRing yeah. still, like yeah. It just means other teams are also growing. Mm -hmm. So we gotta continue to uh, grow. to grow as well mm -hmm. our, on our team and the, our skill. So, uh, but our women's team does look good. Uh, Kate's been killing it. Anna's really been doing great all uh -huh. year. She's been the leader of the women's team. So looking to see what she how she finished the year. Mm -hmm. But that's that's kind of the story of our team is how will we finish yes right we're not gonna you're not gonna really know this is for all sports so you're not gonna really know or talk about how the whole season went it's about how you finish yep that's right? all that matters that's really yeah all that matters when it comes to you know competing in sports um is how you finish and that goes of course the result but also you know the testimony yep so Fall sports. Looking forward to it. Thank you, guys. Fall sports almost over. Cross country wrapping it up this week. Next week we'll have a big trophy for you. I don't know actually, but <laughs> hopefully. Uh, but uh, go kill it, cross country. We That's love you guys. It, yes. We know you might not feel uh, like you're talked about a lot on this podcast. We, we love you. But we honestly, we you guys, you guys are the most consistent um, and best and I, right now. I, I love you. And you're still, uh, you're still, you're competing still. Yes. So kill, go kill it. Go prove, you know, Matt wrong when he talks bad about. I'm joking. What? <laughs> I'm joking. What? I'm joking. I'm joking. You're <laughs> Matt's gonna. Wow. He's gonna slap me after I this. Will, I'm going to. He doesn't. <laughs> Matt doesn't. <laughs> no, we do love cross country and we love everything you have done for um, Emmaus as well as just uh, for for uh, the community here. Mm -hmm. Again, we, uh, shout out the Girardis because yeah. they have made such a significant impact on the school and on the cross country. Every time we do talk about cross country. And it's always good. So I don't know what people talk about. I don't know why they. Right. Yeah. We have like so many like volleyball players that come up to us and just like. Good job. You talked for two minutes and 27.85 seconds about cross country. Like, come on. No, we race in three weeks. So we love you guys. <laughs> don't do. listen to the haters. Yep. Listen you guys, to us. Cause you guys we are the best you. Eagles right now. We love you. We do. All right. Moving on. Uh, Shane. Winter sports, Basketball baby. time. Here we go. Mm, basketball is my favorite sport. I love the way that you dribble the ball up and down the court. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That's cool. Shut so up. we started. Uh, we started. I'm all top for basketball. Look at me as he's the assistant coach. I know it all. So. Sure. The basketball teams are both men's and women's team have started. They've had both three games this season. Uh, men's team is one and 
Two. Two. Women's team is 0 and 3, but our women's team um, is lacking in numbers. Not a lot of uh, uh, depth no on depth. the bench when it comes to substitution, uh, et cetera. So they've played really well for not having any depth. They've played, actually, they played excellent not having any depth, I would say, uh, for what they can bring, what they bring to the court, being in every single game. Being in every single game. So, shout out to the players. Shout out to uh, Cody and the staff uh, for really preparing our women's team for um, all these games. Mm -hmm. I think everyone has was really surprised knowing that uh, there there wasn't uh, a lot of incoming students uh, joining the women's basketball team. And it was going to we be, were, or if we were going to have a team, to be yeah, honest, it was really rough uh, for sure. And seeing what they've been able to do is really encouraging. Yeah. I know I know the record isn't isn't nice at all, but seeing how we're only losing by you know single digits in most of the games is very encouraging. Mm -hmm. You got you got anything? I was letting, I was letting the professional. Oh my! And then, and then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's on the women's yeah, side. So yeah. yeah, talking about women's basketball. Yeah, it's been you know this is Coach Kennard's Coach Cody Kennard, alumni of the school, his first year taking over the program. Yep. Um, they have six girls right now, seven when uh, cross country is done. And man, Cody has really prepared these girls. Like you said, um, a lot of unknown going in the season just because, yeah. you know, low numbers, but he is, he's putting each woman in position to succeed. And I love it. And yeah, for off the bat, they play, they played Trinity twice and then they played Mount Mary, which is a D three in Wisconsin. And so first game of the season, I mean, we ended up, we lost. 67 to 59 but we had a 12 point lead going into the fourth quarter yeah they looked really good it was it what it came down to was we have five players that play 40 minutes a game yeah and it was just stamina at the end mm -hmm. but they were right there and it's like you know it stinks that you lost that 12 point lead ended up losing by what eight but like they're right there like mm -hmm. they are going to win some games they're going to surprise a lot of people this year because oh, yeah. the the five starters that they have you know they are they are really playing well. I mean, yep. and then the second the next day they played uh, Trinity again. You know, lost sixty one fifty five, um, and then when they played Mount Mary, they lost by four. So they're there in every single game. Some highlights right now: Shane, uh, Aaron McKenna Dog. is sixth in the nation in scoring. That's my applicant. And Rachel Barrett, number one in the NCCAA in rebounding. Dog crazy. She's had. A 15 rebound game, a 20 rebound That's game. That's crazy. And a 17 rebound game, or 19 that. rebound game, or se sorry, 17 rebound game, which mm -hmm. is crazy. Yeah, Rachel being a, a dual athlete, yep. uh, choosing to uh, stay with basketball this season um, and really focus on that, yeah. it shows. It yeah. shows. So I'm looking forward to I mean, the second game of the year, does. she had 17 points and 20 rebounds. Mm. Crazy. Aaron's then, only a sophomore too, and she's she's quick. She is. She's and she's quick. like, she's, she's like, right, yeah, she's, she's improved so much from last year. And like she, I mean, the sky's the limit for her. She's going to be a great. I might have said this Eagle. on the podcast before, but I give out a, uh, if you come on a guest visit and you're, and I'm running your visit, I give out a scholarship, the Douglas uh, Foundation Scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> I should make it a super long title. Essentially, if you, I give you one three point shot. And if you make it, it's your first shot. Cold Shane shot. gives you $100. I'll give you $100 if you come to Mace. You walk through that door. Mm -hmm. The only person who has ever made it is Aaron McKenna. <laughs> and typically, I don't run the athletes. So that's great because I would be like I mean, very you've poor. Done like 30, you've had like 35 people at least do it. And only oh, one person's made one it. Per and, she, <laughs> and the men's basketball team was watching uh -huh. too. So, Crazy. Uh, she had the pressure. Yeah. And she sank it. So but yeah. It so they've, I mean, yeah, 0-3, but like nothing to be ashamed of. They've been playing. They're playing oh. well. And yeah. for having five girls that play 40 minutes a game. Yeah. And also, crazy thing, Jenna Lossetter had 19 rebounds against Mount Mary. Dog, that's crazy. She they're just all—they're yeah. all balling out. Because I mean, they are. It, it comes with a lot of trust, it knowing does. that you don't have a lot of depth, knowing mm -hmm. that this might and be your last have season. To be with, smart, like, like you can't get Jenna. stupid fouls, you can't yeah. swing at stuff, you can't mm -mm. swipe. Like you have to play very smart. And I think they—I think uh, they've only had one person foul out, and so and that was in the second game. Yeah. And so, but. Yeah. And they've learned from that. Like, shoot, from, we can't do that yeah, again. We can't take so, those chances. But like the more the more the players get to know Cody and mm -hmm. staff and then uh, learn to trust the coach and then mm -hmm. same with uh, Cody Kennard with his players and they really come together this season. I'm I'm interested to see how the community forms. Mm -hmm. Uh cuz we have it cuz Cody's new to Especially when Kate comes back the, from cross yeah. country and joins the team, so, yeah, so that'll I'm really, be a huge boost. I'm really uh, excited to see uh how how the girls um 
uh, the women's team has formed as yes. a community, as a culture, mm-hmm. and how uh, uh, Cody and, and staff has uh, really helped out. Yes. So, so yeah, because the, the women's culture has always been great for basketball team. They've always mm-hmm. uh, had uh, a lot of discipleship, mentorship, and uh, really just a sisterhood. So And a fair amount of success, too, especially in the mid-2010s. That's true. So uh, keep an eye out for... Uh, yeah. Uh, but they're on the road a lot. They don't yeah. have a home oh, game really? until December 14th. That's really tough. Yeah. That's really tough. So I, I'm looking, I haven't seen a game yet because I've been traveling uh-huh. so much unlike you. So yeah. So there'll be a lot uh, <laughs> unlike me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The podcast uh-huh. shows the podcast shows. I've missed on the road. three. Mm-hmm. You've missed one. I've also have a uh, seniority cause I've been doing this job. That doesn't mean nothing. Four times. Seniority. You I don't want to go on the trip. So yeah, That's look, laziness. I don't want to go on the trip. I had men's basketball okay. games. Shane hey, Douglas. Just, hey, we're Sounds not. Sounds like there's a little man. We need to have <laughs> Dr. Broussard in here with these hostilities I on Dr. traveling. Broussard. Shout out to Dr. Broussard. Oh, wow. D1 referee. 15 years. Dog. He's a dog. So speaking of traveling um, and getting home last night at 1 a.m., but we won't talk Way about that. Way to throw that, that in there, so, man. So men's <laughs> basketball. Yes. Yeah, so gosh. we are two, we are one and two right now. So our first game of the season, we played the Spurgeon Knights. Spurgeon was the third ranked team last year. They have a very unique physical play style. Mm-hmm. And boy, we got, we got a little banged up. We, we had two guys that got ankles hurt and mm-hmm. had to miss the next two games, but they, I mean, they are a fine oiled machine. Yeah. We lost, you know, 117 to 83. Tatum did score 20 points before he got, uh, hit and then got hurt. Full, um, co- full, full court full, they press. Full court press all 40 minutes. Game. Yeah, it's crazy. And I think they had like almost 40 fouls called against them. But you guys were Because in their it, mindset the first, is yeah. we're going to foul you and the refs are only going to call a certain amount. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. And so like they'll full court press, they'll foul you all the game long. And honestly, it's not a bad strategy. I'm no, not it's, it, honestly, it's not. Especially if you have the depth. I mean, they have like, mm-hmm. they can play like 18 guys. So like, yeah. And like there. some of those guys are starting five. So, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, think I, they, they had, like, I think they had four guys foul or five guys foul out. That's so, crazy. Yeah, it is. That is wild. Yeah. So that was a big first uh, game of the year. And then we followed that up with Trinity. But you guys were um, in it. You guys were in it the first half. I mean, we were in it the first, you know, 12 minutes. And then you know, that's the, a long depth, game. Yeah. So many fouls. The game lasted like two hours and 15 minutes. It was like the long, two and a half hours. It was the longest basketball game My ever. Gosh. He shot 46 free throws into the game. But yeah, then Trinity. <laughs> um bounce back we played them on saturday a couple days after um obviously we didn't have tatum and they didn't have one of their starters because apparently they went to who hot the night before the game and got food poisoning and so they were battling <laughs> food poisoning crazy. which is cr- they all yeah. had their mj game i know yeah <laughs> they all had and so, their MJ and game. i mean they are they have they have this they have a transfer number three for them um jonathan and he played for a division one juco in california oh. which people talk about is the hardest non-division one basketball conference like in the u.s and he he's really good okay. they have two guys and then I thought they, he was from kansas and then they have it no he's not he's from california my bad and then he had and then they have marcellus who's their fifth year returning all leading score and they're gonna be good this year and yeah. they we statistically we we had 18 offensive rebounds we had 18 assists we only had 11 turnovers but we shot horrendously we shot 30 and 23 percent from the field and you're not gonna and you're not gonna win a game and we took more shots than they did too which was you know usually the team that takes the more shots wins but we that's funny just did not shoot the ball well at all and so we lost that game 93 68 um if we had shot you know just a little bit better you know we were i mean it was we were up 21 17 with 10 minutes to go in the game or sorry, 10 minutes to go in the first half. And then they just went on a run because they made those shots that we didn't make. Mm -hmm. We struggled to guard the ball, but we're going to get better at that. And so, you know, that was, that was a little disappointing. You know, Nash didn't have a good game, but he had a a really good bounce back game on Tuesday. And so we worked on Monday and then we traveled up to Chicago um, on Tuesday where we got to play our rival, our regional rival, our school rival, as you know, we were in Oak Park, Chicago for many, many years, close to Moody. Um, and it was it was a crazy game. It was a fun game. Yeah. Uh, we ended up pulling out the victory. Yeah. We won 82 78. Um, I mean, the it was I mean, I this I looked at the stats afterwards and they said there were 17 lead changes. That's a lot. That's too much. That's a lot. And so 
you know, we won by four. The guys held it out at the end. It was fun because we had three families there and uh, we had 11 students dr- that drove I up know, to the I game. S- I noticed that. I know. Weird. It was crazy. And yeah. so, yes, Jenica. Shout out Jenica Beach, Michelle Striley, <laughs> Lindsay McElveen, Allie Hunter, Elsie Schwartzberger, uh, Lily Holton, Lily Cook, um, Cheyenne, um, Coniglio, and oh. then Lucas Leslie and Edwin. That's 10. The, the Edwin. Edwin Ventura. That's yep. 10. You said 11. Who did I miss? Oh, this is so, this is why you never oh, should have tough. done that, dude. And we never should have done that. Oh, Emma Sand, Emma Sand. Yes. Oh, yeah. Shout out, shout out, Scorbert. <laughs> and so yeah, it was really cool. We they came wow. and supported us, and you know, it was a fun game. Um, you know, first game I think it was Tatum had twenty. Second game Josh had eighteen, and then Josh wow. Stewart went off against Moody. He had twenty one points. Dog. And Nash had nineteen, nine rebounds, and seven assists. He was on triple double watch. Mm-hmm. And so it was great to have triple that first win watch. of the year. Um, and then, you know, to have that momentum carrying into this weekend when we play on Saturday, you know, Lord willing, we'll have Tatum back, which yeah. is going to be a huge boost. And Who so you play this Saturday. We play Northland College. They're division three. Actually, our next are two games are against D3s. Yep. Home at Emmaus. Sweet. And then we play next Tuesday against Maranatha. Girls don't have a game for like until next Saturday. They don't play this weekend? They don't play. They don't play for like 14 days. Okay. Yeah. So they don't play till not this upcoming Saturday, but the following Saturday before Thanksgiving break. And so, yeah, I mean, that's literally all we have until, until next episode is those two games. So we're excited. It should be, yeah. it should be fun. It's really great. Down. The guys got that first win and it was, it was a great team win and you know, we can, we can carry this momentum going forward and work on the things we need to work on, but see the things that like we were able to score the basketball, which was amazing. Yeah. We just got to defend the basketball now. It's going to be a little quiet uh, as uh, fall sports comes to a close this weekend with cross country and we transition to uh, basketball uh, season uh, as first semester basketball. Not many games, not too many. So About 10 or so. Yeah. yeah. So we'll talk more uh, come you know, Jan- have, January. The women second have semester. six, seven, seven. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have a lot to talk about with basketball and the, yeah. the upcoming games for sure. Uh, upcoming season more more so uh, yeah. right now. But it's exciting. I mean, the men's team, I know uh, what you were just talking about with the men's team and kind of some disappointments and uh, um, uh, not not hitting the potential here and there and uh, all the turnovers or rebounding issues. And, of course, the, you guys are it's a new team, pretty oh, much yeah. a complete and new team. Our first two games of the year were against two you know, nationally ranked teams too. Yeah. So, uh, given that you guys were really in the game, kind of like how coach Hannah scheduled the volleyball yeah. season to start. Yeah. Yeah. So coach I'm, Parker did the same. I'm excited to see how, uh, uh, the guys really form together. The culture is created. You guys mm-hmm. learn more how to play with each other, sharpen, uh, you got the skills and, uh, the tendencies to, to not turn over the ball, to get a board, especially an offensive board Make a basket, uh, or a defensive board. So basketball, yeah, put the ball in the in basket. The, in the basket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Crazy uh, how simple the game of basketball is. I do. Is. I do think. Uh, I do know that you guys, uh, the men's basketball team, is going to. Um, they're starting rough right now, but look out. I know. Excited for Shane to be at the game on Saturday to watch I will us be. play. I will be. Shout out Shane. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Because you're actually in town. Yeah, I know. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm done. Yeah. I know because I travel so much. Uh, yeah, me too. You, you, no, you, uh-huh. what? Oh yeah, I'm uh-huh. joking. Okay, we also, gotta wrap by this the up. way, speaking of that, really fun driving the new school van, the school van diesel, van diesel. The, the big mini bus. It's actually really fun to drive. I enjoyed it. I want to drive it. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you, Matt, for yeah, Shane. Of course, <laughs> dude. I can't right. look at you right now. Oh my goodness. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for listening and making us a part Mom of your and day. Mom and Dad are fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Make us, uh, making us a part of your daily routine, yes. Uh, wherever that may be, if that's your drive to work, if that's on your couch or uh, in your dorm room. Uh, thank you so much for uh, listening to us, showing us support, showing Emmaus the support and love. We appreciate you guys. Uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or X. Facebook, YouTube. whatever it may be, YouTube, wh- wherever you watch the podcast, give us a like, uh, share this, subscribe, whatever you want to do, um, or a, a view, a view helps. So thank you so much, everybody. And Matt, what's today? Shane, today is a great day to be an Emmaus Eagle. Go Eagles. See you next week.